We are on the cusp of a new era. And a technological revolution is transforming our lives at breakneck speed. Altering the ways in which we work, communicate, and even learn. Siri, what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is a field which combines computer science and robust data sets to enable problem solving. Alongside of a sophisticated use of big data, artificial intelligence is recording exponential growth and finding new applications across a number of sectors, one of which is the credit facility space. I've come to meet with the co-founders of Ripple, a Nigerian startup helping financial institutions analyze credit worthiness and detect fraud. It's quite easy to be able to access the product, so to be able to use the product, right? So it's just three easy steps. We um, you schedule a demo as a customer, right? And we take you through um, the different endpoints and different end modules on the products. The company also helps borrowers access credit, all while using artificial intelligence tools. In Nigeria currently, um, if you want to time your credit score, where do you go to? Most likely you don't know. Like There's really no um, specific points whereby you can check your credit score or credit worthiness. So what we did was we said, okay, let's create this for the consumers, help them to determine their credit score and credit worthiness. And we also partnered with some of these consumers um, to um, analyze, to use their data rather to train our system. So we use their data to train our model. Then when we did that, we had uh, a system that can cognitively recognize and um, analyze data uh, first time. So we use that now to you know, structure that for the banks and loan companies. So with banks and loan companies, and when they come to our platform, pretty much what we do for them is that we're able to help them fetch data or use um, the unstructured data that they have, we structure it and we analyze it and determine the credit worthiness of their consumers. So what has technology got to do with the human value of trust? As one would imagine that, that is a very important uh, core value when it comes to the credit industry's uh, customer base. So if there's like um, past um, information, right? From like your financial history, AI is capable to be able to you know extract some of those past information and in invariably predict your future behavior, which can help any credit underwriter to be able to make any informed decisions um, depending on um, a particular person's spending behavior or transactional pattern over time. Behavioral patterns are just as imperative in the use of AI across other key sectors. Just like with Duchess, a technology company building platforms that help users identify key audiences for internet advertising. We have 21 million people in Lagos, um, but those 21 million people are never your customers. You need to specify among the 21 million people who is your customer and identify those customers using certain metrics. And you need to use machines and uh, models that we identify to say, okay, out of the people in Lagos, I want to target like 5 million people that, have, that are young, or 5 million people that are females, or 5 million people that are going to buy a mobile phone. And you cannot necessarily decide on those things by just um, intuition. You need data, you need placements. So AI comes in to say, hey, uh, you want to target people that want mobile phones, you want to target people that live in certain locations, you want to make those decisions in split seconds and qualify only your ad to show when somebody makes those decisions. That's where AI comes in. We build models that respond to questions the same way a human being would have responded to it. You know, when you ask the ChatGPT questions, the way it responds is the thing we have built into the chatbot. So it responds like a human being. If you ask for a product price, it to tell you the product price. If you have asked for a product description, it gives you. And then if you ask for uh, simple solutions, it will be able to provide that. But with the rise of AI and machine learning comes mixed reactions in relation to the future of work and job security. And I wanted to get a feel of the opinions out there around this. I don't believe in AI taking my job. I, I even feel like it's going to assist me the more in being effective in my role. When you talk about the apps that are used in my field, I talk about the um, Exocad and also the Inlab. These softwares have been integrated with AI and they are the game changers. 
Now, work has been made so, so much easier with this application. I'm more on the line. So, AI has actually come to stay. If my boss wakes up or, or decides to um, get an AI um, software, it's going to be a challenge because I send emails out, yes. So um, that will render me jobless. So what I'm going to do is um, I, I will try and um, make use of AI. I will learn how to use AI quicker before my boss um, finds out or starts using it. I'm liking this to the dot-com bubble we had in the 2000s. People thought it was going to lose, people were going to lose jobs and the computers were going to take over their jobs. But here we are, 23 the years down the line, and the IT industry is one of the highest employers of labor because it has exploded. Now, it is something that is going to happen in the job market because we're not going to have job losses, we're going to have job alignment, skill alignment. So, we're going to have a new job set that is built on IT, that is built on enhanced AI, that is built on human beings providing aspects that AI cannot provide. And some of them include even writing the models and the inputs that the AI will use to make decisions. There are going to be some sectors or maybe majorly sectors that have processes that can be automated that should be scarce for their jobs because <laughs> of course AI is coming. But then again, um, there are also more jobs that will be created due to AI, right? And um, what this just does is that it will just basically encourage people to upskill themselves, right? To improve on themselves, to be able to, you know, perform tasks that um, a machine would not be able to do in the long run. Almost directly related to sensitization around workforce upskilling is the AI adoption level for businesses. From healthcare to financial technology and agriculture, Jonathan Enudeme runs an artificial intelligence marketplace that works across industry verticals, but finds that a poor interactive understanding of AI solutions have had an impact on its reception rate on the continent. We want to help companies to use AI without spending so much money and we discovered after doing market research that the best way was to develop a marketplace and this is a marketplace where you know developers and companies can sell their APIs and even startups can also come plug into the APIs and use to make business decisions. I have clients now We've been talking about how to solve solutions in the agricultural space with AI. We've come up with different solutions that are comp different companies abroad are solving with AI, like plant disease detection and um, you know harvesting. We've come up with those solutions for these clients, but he couldn't just picture how it works with his business. Then ChatGPT came, and he started seeing how ChatGPT works. Then suddenly he says, "Oh, Jonathan, I think I have an idea of what we can do." And you know, we just started from there. I think the more opportunity people have to understand AI, the more use cases they find, then the easier for them to adopt these use cases to their businesses. While artificial intelligence is an invaluable asset for the responsible development of business and society, ethics-related concerns have also risen from its use. How can we be sure that algorithms don't infringe on fundamental human rights, from privacy to data confidentiality and freedom of choice? How do we guard against social and cultural stereotypes replication in AI programming? Can values be programmed? And by whom? So many questions. We're more concerned about the ethical part of data where, you know, somebody is misdiagnosed, for instance, um, it credits, someone is not credited, a few, the data is fed, it's telling you it's on the default, paying that loan. There's something they call deep fix. So there are situations where you've seen a video of somebody, it looks very real, and this is this person talking, but it's totally fake. It's not the person, it's somebody else. So AI can generate its own data. So all these clauses have been put, policies, are creating policies to make sure they can curtail the harmful effects of AI. 
with respect to us, what we do is what we want to um, you know, help a consumer gain access to credit through our loan partners. We ask them, we're going to share your data with these guys and do you authorize it, yes or no? So that's one. And second one again is um, ensuring that um, you know most um, companies or most AI companies don't store data or process data you know, without the authority of the individuals or customers or consumers, right? So, and that's why you have um, NDPR in Nigeria, or Nigeria Data Protection um, Bureau that you know, pretty much uh, tries to regulate data within Nigeria. One of the major things is when you use people's data and you process it, ensure that you delete it from your system, right? So I think that's, I think it's gonna be about ensuring that first and foremost, um, you know, the AI companies, um, the data companies follow, um, you know, strict regulations around data protection. The need for human reliance on localization of targeted metrics is a solving bomb for skeptics of AI across some industries. The data that comes out of Nigerian digital space is not the same thing with what happens in the global space because of IP mismatches and a whole lot of things. It takes a homegrown business that understands the Nigerian market to understand how Nigerians behave on the internet and how businesses who want to reach local markets should fashion their digital marketing campaigns and how advertisers should fashion their projects. So what's on the horizon for these promising companies in relation to the future? You have lots of people going to US and you know Canada and UK right now, but they don't really have um, money to pay for their school fees. They don't have money to get housing, and they just go there they struggle. And so through these partnerships that we currently got and these investments, uh, within the next two three months, actually, we're going to be um, launching that whereby we're going to be seeing uh, us um, helping lots of immigrants, you know, gain access to credit worthiness and therefore gain access to credit. Skeptic or enthusiast? Nervous? or veteran. It is certain that the future of work will evolve. It might empower you, work against you, or become a powerful collaborator. But in spite of what side you're on, it is fair to say, prepare for an inescapable reality. Abby Olawi for Arise News.